I want to know what your opinion here is for for self driving, um, li licensing out for self driving to other automakers. We already know that based on the last earnings call that Tesla is working with an automaker with an OEM to license out FSC, but that that was also said previously. That was also something that Tesla said, I think, a, a few years ago. So take it with a grain of salt right now. It's likely the case. It just depends how they're going to come to terms with it. If it turns out, which I believe this is the case, if, you know, Tesla will solve autonomy. Question becomes, is Tesla one of the only players that solves autonomy <laughs> that is scalable, that you can actually call it level four, even potentially level five? It's solved in a way that doesn't require the additional sensors, the HD maps, the cellular towers that if they go down, your car stop working, which is again, what happened to Cruise in San Francisco over the weekend. So if you can do that and scale it and the, and the sensor solution, so the cameras and the, and the hardware is extremely easy to implement into an existing vehicle format. Like say, say like Ford wants to include it in the next generation Mustang Mach-E and all they have to do is just have the slots there for the cameras and a place for the for the computer and once they have that it's like their car can just drive itself and it doesn't require a freaking tower of of sensors on the <laughs> roof and you need to reinforce the roof and you got to put all these insane sensors and stuff in the car that will solve for it if it's that streamlined then the automaker is going to be incentivized to partner with Tesla because the manufacturing process on their end becomes stupidly simple. So you also have to think about it that way. Because from that perspective, then Tesla becomes a really a tier one supplier. Tesla yeah. becomes a tier one supplier of autonomy systems. And if they're the ones that can supply at a very low cost to the, to the manufacturer, and that still allows the manufacturer to say our cars drive themselves, then, it, then what manufacturer wouldn't do that? And so that's where Tesla's approach is very unique, is that they, they have the ability to do that. I, don't, I haven't seen any other uh, automaker or uh, autonomy software hardware solution co company, either in the States or in China, that is near anywhere the elegance of um, implementation of their system. And that's going to be giant. Because for autonomy, for it to actually be everywhere, you need to scale. You need to create a lot of cars that can do this. And creating a lot of cars that can do this with a thousand sensors is a thousand times harder than a lot of cars that can do this with only eight cameras, right? So at that point, once Tesla solves autonomy and Tesla has been very open about licensing their, their hardware and software, my question becomes, who wouldn't do that? How would Ford and GM license out Tesla's FSD? Like they how they would bring it onto their cars, you mean? Yeah, how would they do it yeah. on their cars? Here's a secret about Ford and GM. Ford and GM, the only thing they build are engines, really. Hmm. Not even that in some situations. So what are Ford and GM? Ford and GM, it like, like rewire how you think about an automaker, like a legacy automaker today. Ford and GM are uh, companies that purchase parts off the shelf from suppliers, from tier one, two, and three suppliers that sell seats, that sell suspensions, that sell steering arms, that sell trim, that sell uh, uh, Alcantara headliners, that sell windshield wipers, that sell uh, freaking the bottle for your windshield fluid, that sell radiators, that sell transmissions. And they are just, they, they just put together puzzle pieces. That's what Ford and GM really are. They're experts at putting together puzzle pieces that will make a car, right? That will make a thing that will take you from point A to point B with you pressing the accelerator pedal. That's all they do. They, so they don't invest time into making the specific pieces. They just work with suppliers. You know, they're like, hey, can you make something a little bit like this? Can you make a little something a little bit like this? They'll think about how it's going to look from a, like a design perspective. But a majority of the parts, they're just putting pieces together. So all Tesla becomes in that scenario is just another company they hire. That's all it is. So they become a supplier. That's all it is. Too. That's crazy. <laughs> right? That's all it is. Tesla just becomes a tier one supplier to GM and Ford. And so from that perspective, again, this is my previous point, is if Tesla's, Tesla's solution for self-driving is so simple compared to the other automakers or the other, again, from my, from my perspective, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, let me know if I'm missing something, but it seems like their solution is by far the most elegant. And so if you're an automaker trying to build a car that, in, that implements Tesla's solution, you just have to account for exactly what you said. We just got to make sure there is eight holes, four on the sides, three in the front, one in the back. And we got to make sure there is a slot for the computer somewhere to run 
And maybe Tesla says, okay, if you want that, you have to bring on our operating system as well, like the thing that runs the screen. And they make it part of the package. And they're like, okay, we just have to make sure we have a screen. And we buy Tesla's computer and we buy their cameras. And then if you put all, all like if you really think about how much material is that, I bet you can fit all eight cameras and the hardware, like the computers, because uh, they don't even need the screen. A screen can be any screen, right? You, it's like a you, you buy a TV that's a 75-inch uh, TV or a 150-inch TV, but they all get plugged into your Apple TV or they get plugged into your cable box, right? That cable box, think of it as the hardware computer for 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 self-driving and to power the the screen, whatever the systems are on that screen. All those things I bet you can fit in a 12 by 12 box. Just all those. And just test us like, here's your 12 by 12 box. You get our OS. You get the, I don't know, you probably don't even have to give them the harnesses and the wires. They can probably get those off the shelf. You give them the cameras. You give them the processing computers. And you're like, here you go, figure out how to put it in your car. And they put it in the car. And then this camera system will be smart enough to sort of calibrate itself to the position. You know, they have to be in a, in a, then probably Tesla's like, hey, if you're going to put your side cameras, we recommend you put it, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, a foot and a half up from the ground and making sure that it faces this angle. And the side cameras, we wanna, want you to put it uh, a foot off the ground facing backwards at this angle. And the front camera, you just got to have a slot for it on the windshield. And the back camera, you got to make sure it's not obstructed by the trunk. That's it. You just set up some rule sets and then the cars figure out how to put it in. Dude, what you just mentioned is a whole new business for Tesla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy jeez. <laughs> how would Tesla charge the licensing for other automakers? Would it be based on a revenue sharing? Because me and Oracle were talking and he's like, maybe they can charge other automakers that do license FSD like the 200 bucks a month at the current time, obviously in five years time, it'll be more than that. The 200 bucks a month, and then they charge their customers, their, their, yeah, their customers, maybe 250, 300. Boomer Mama is like, no, it's going to be a revenue sharing 20%, 30%, something like that. And I'm just like, yeah. both are great ideas, but what, what, what would make the most, I would think the revenue thing would make more sense. This way it's like based on customers. So if they do it as a, if there's a fixed price where they're like, hey, for GM, we will charge you $10,000 for the software and hardware package. And then you get to pocket all the, all the earnings from like your monthly revenue by either by, by allowing people to sign up for it on a monthly basis or allowing them to buy it outright. Then that does two things that are not great. It increases the upfront costs for the manufacturer. And it also makes it so that Tesla misses out on recurring revenue over like the tail life of the vehicle, right? So, so Ford has to spend $10,000 on that package as an example, and then that automatically makes their car $10,000 more expensive. Where the revenue share makes sense is that the, the Tesla could just say, we'll give you the hardware for free, kind of what they're doing right now with their cars. If you put that stuff in your, in your car, we have the right to track on our hardware, whatever it is, how many miles the car is being driven while it's active, and then we do a revenue share of some sort. You know, or like how many months the software is active for. But that's what equation one. Equation two is when people want to use that same car and add it to the fleet of robo taxis. Because you have to remember, there's two variables here. There's one variable where you say rent FSD for 200 bucks a month where it drives you around as an individual. And then there's a second variable where you take the car and you add it to a fleet without a driver and then the car does work for you. Variable number one Tesla and Ford and GM, whoever could could say, you know, we'll go halvesies or we'll go 80, 20. And then the robo taxi one for that car to be allowed to pick people up. I bet you what they say is that it has to run on Tesla's robo taxi network. The only place you can add this car is on Tesla's robo taxi network. And if That's that were the case, you know what I'm saying? Then yeah. it becomes super easy. It becomes okay. Ford gets a cut and then Tesla gets the other cut. And then Tesla doesn't have to worry about maintenance or nothing. Y'all can figure it out. You know, you guys can figure out that equation. So that's how I view it. I mean, if I'm going to set up a pricing strategy for it, that's how I view it. It's like you, you don't want to miss out on the long on the on the long term software revenues on this. So offering it as a free hardware and then just uh, charging on the monthly subscription or per mile if it's a robo taxi makes the most sense. And it lowers the barrier of entry for both the manufacturer and the customer. And Tesla can make money over 10 years on the same car.